Hello everybody, welcome back. So this week while we're having breakfast or a cup of coffee and tea at our new marble table, uh, we're going to show you how to make a smaller version of this, a circular uh, marble topped table. Yeah, it's a simple, yeah, simple design but a lot of people have been asking how I cut the marble etc so we're going to show you that. And we are also going to put a top on this and it's probably going to be uh, marble as well because we have two bits so we've got a piece that will fit here so we're going to put a marble top on there and we're also going to drill the hole in the ceiling to take the flue. And we've also had Ewan from Frankie Off Grid to come and fight some wasps and give us a hand carrying some blocks over and starting these walls of the barn. And we also have the start of the plum wine recipe. Okay, so we'll start off with doing a few measurements um, of where things are going, where we're drilling holes, etc. etc. <coughs> so I've got, I haven't got a level that long, but my other level's too long. So what I'd do is use something of a similar, uh, the appropriate length, then I can mark the edges of this on the roof, but I need to take that off. How do I do that? Without breaking it. Uh, get a step ladder. Oh, it's a big sticky thing. You can't have that anymore. Why? Because the flue's going here, so it'd be in the way. I'll remove that as well. You can have a light, that's all. I'm just mar marking the edges of the flue. One. Right, that'll be the other. And the front. Okay, there. I'll hold that. <laughs> the joys of being short. Okay, ready? Right, let me get this. Right, thank you. Well, I'm not, if I let go. Thank you, that's it. Take it with you. We well, didn't see. Oh, honestly, men. Okay, so now I need to find something. Uh... <laughs> that's not going to answer back. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Well, of course I need to find something. I've already got it. So I'm going to use what I'm going to cut the hole with as a marker. And I've got the actual size of it here. And it looks like I'm going to be a bit wider than that. So I'd say it's going to go there. Center in as well. Hey. So that's that. So this is going to be, I'd say, 680 by 600. That's a good size for there. And it looks like as well, I'm going to have to cut the top of this off. Something like that. So 680 by 600, yeah? 680 there. Uh, yeah, 600 there. Okay, write these sizes down. Really? But, right, and now this will be the circular one. 
so we're talking 580, half of which is 290, and yeah, that's 600, so we'll have to be, we'll mark halfway. So where these points cross will be centre, and then I'll mark 200 and what did I say? 580. So it'd be 290, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll mark a 290, make it a bit less, 285, so we catch that. So I'll make, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. It's about 50 kilos. Find the best edge. And we've got to mark our hole in here for the flue to come through and then cut it to length. So in the depths of my tools, this isn't the main workshop bit, this is where we've got all the junk which we need to barn for. I have a lovely little thing which I haven't used for a while, as you can see. <laughs> So, we need to cut this edge off at 680. Simplest way of doing that is holding your finger on the mark at 680 or whatever it is. Um, what would that be? 26, 27 inches, whatever. Yeah, and just running that, and holding a pencil on the end. Simple stuff. So, from there now, we need to measure in. A mark I've done previously, which is the centre of the flue, and the centre of the flue this way. Believe it or not, we are there. It's very close to the edge. For the flue, it'd be like that. So I just checked my diamond core bit, one of the ones I have. Uh, just check that this outside dimension, which is about 115 millimeters, yeah. Just check that it's actually bigger than the flue, which it is, which is handy. So I need to line this up with the center. Uh, what I think is roughly the center of there. So we we'll go there and there. Just check that. Oh, that's pretty good. So where we had it. There. So I'll just draw this line around here. So in here I have one of these, which is like uh, what you call a skill saw or a circular saw. But this is a circular saw for cutting stone. And uh, the last time I used it was for cutting this marble. So I've forgotten all the controls. Don't need to be going too deep. So these blades are just, um, as you can see, written on it. They're just diamond. These are industrial diamonds uh, etched into tungsten carbide. Yeah, simple stuff. It probably needs. Can't believe my head's got bigger. <laughs> Sorry, smaller. Mm -hmm.
Just check I'm cutting on the right line. Yay! Great success. So we've got a decent edge there now, but some of these, as you can see, the edges are a bit cracked. So all I use is, this is just a, a, an ordinary metal file. See that? Just to take off these sharp edges. Same on the bottom. There we go. So I'm now going to drill, pre drill uh, just a pilot hole. So the center. Um, Centre drill that this thing spins around has somewhere to go. Just make the hole a bit bigger so it's the same size as the drill on the core. So now that it's, now it's centered, I can uh, I can make a bigger hole. Hopefully. There we go, that's our hole. Nicely done, and then everything nicely covered in. I look like a statue. Going to sunlight. I look like a statue now, I'm a marble statue. Everything nicely covered in marble splatters. <laughs> Here we go, a bit lighter now. Uh, forgot to cut the door down. Hopefully it will fit. Let's 
give it a go. That's rather heavy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, we'll obviously, have to cut the door down. So there, matches the table. And it's got a lot of dust falling in. Into Not the that boiler. Not much dust here. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Ideal. Right, I'll cut this off. Okay, I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut this in situ so I don't have to unscrew all the door and everything, make it easier. The only problem is with a normal jigsaw blade here, as you can see, the teeth pointing up. So when you cut, it pulls towards the jigsaw, which on this edge, it, you, get a, you get a frayed edge, yeah? But what I have is what they call a, re re <laughs> I can't say it, a reverse cut blade, which cuts on the downstroke. Yeah, so that pushes oh, all over the floor. So that pushes on that stroke going down, so you don't get a frayed edge on this edge. We'll give it a go. Can't see. No, I still can't see. I need to come in this way. Is it going to have to come off? Is it? Let me try make let me try and make a start moment. So there we go, marble top fitted. Uh, bit of a gap here to sort out, but yeah, all on there, matches the table. And the flue will be coming up there. As you can see, it's right in line. All good. Okay, so now to draw the circle on this piece of marble. What I've got is a piece of wood at the right length. Uh, this is 580. So I've cut a piece 290, but I've put it in 5 mil. So I've got some cuts to do on the outside. So I get a nice even circle. So we've already found the centre of the table. All I need to do is put the point of that screw in the centre. Yeah, and then place my pencil at the end of this and As if by magic a line appears. Anyone can tell me that reference would be interesting. As if by magic the shopkeeper appears. <laughs> and there we go. So now we'll go and cut that after we've had a cup of tea. So what I'll do now is just create a series of straight lines across here, across the corners, like so. Oh, that one went a bit wonky, but yeah, and I'll cut these off with the with the circular saw, and then we'll do the same again with these bits like that. Like that.
there. And then what I'll do is I'll grind off these pieces that are left, these little patches in between. Here, here, here. I'll grind them off with a with an angle grinder with the diamond bit on. So as always, PPE. Okay, so Ooh, -da! there we go, all done. Uh, nice. nice and round. I could still do with there's a couple of scratches on here, but I'll sort them out later. So we put this face down where Gilly's not supposed to be. <laughs> there's a table. And that's where the table's going to go. What I'm going to do is sand off three bits of eucalyptus so it's like a three legged stool and just glue them to here. I've got some special glue from Steve. Thanks Steve. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll glue that on and then I'll cut the bottoms of the wall at the right level and then we have the coffee table. cable. Nice. Okay, so there we are. Um, I've sanded these off. We have our tabletop and we have glue. So what I'm gonna do now is just arrange these on here. This side down, wrong side down. See, got it all wrong to start with. That's better. Maybe not. So that they sit near the edge, not on the edge, but near the edge. And look fairly straight. They look fairly straight. You're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. I know. That's not bad, I don't think. And what I'll do is I'll trim, once I've done that, I'll get our laser level out and we'll trim these off to the right height once they're stuck down. But I'm quite happy with that. Nice positioning. Yeah. They look fairly upright. There we go. And obviously three legs because then a three-legged stool never rocks, as we all know. Just put a mark. Like so. So we know where they fit. And then we're using this stuff. It's a polymer adhesive. Um, Available worldwide in different names, but that's just the brand we're using. Thank you, Steve. So, we'll put some blobs along the bottom of here. And quite simply, stick it down. The reason I'm gluing these it's fairly obvious. I don't want to be screwing through marble, it's only thin. There, there are different things I could do, but I think the, we've glued this and it's absolutely, this is glued to here and to the floor. And it's absolutely solid. So I've no reason to doubt that this wouldn't be the same. Oh.
and as I knew we would, we've run out. Here's a handy tip when you're using silicone, many tubes of it, don't use a new um, nozzle. nozzle every time. Just unscrew that one because you know it's full of stuff. And screw it on the new one as long as you're using the same colour, obviously. <laughs> If you want to trim off the excess afterwards, just wait for it to dry. And there we go. So give that a couple of hours, we can turn it over, cut the feet off, job done. Okay, nearly forgot. <coughs> I have to drill a hole in the roof. We made a mistake earlier. I made a mistake earlier. Uh, I put the drew the hole here, yeah. And then forgot there's a big metal beam running along here which fixes the roof to the to the granite wall. So I've drilled a series of holes to find out where the edge of that metal beam is, and it turns out we've got to come out another more than 50 mil. So um, I've recentered now where the edge of this comes on the edge of our metal beam. Uh, we'll try and drill up through there. This is where everything gets covered in sawdust. Nailed on, look at that. <laughs> We're right on the edge of the this wood. So, what I did was a metal beam and then a wooden beam screwed to that. So, we're on the edge of the wooden beam here. Just get rid of that a minute. The diamond bits. Yeah, because it's a big, deep. Oh, I might have got one that size. Hang on. Okay, so I found a diamond bit of similar diameter. Hopefully it'll go through this hole. Yes, it will. So we'll do a quick swap. Uh -huh. uh, that's really, I suppose it's because it's, um, it's quite dense. It's getting stuck on the... <sighs> okay, so that's through the wood, through the insulation. So that's uh, 60, 115 mil so far. So I've had to do it in sections because this is only 35 mil. Uh, now it's only the steel to go, so here goes. So we're putting this flue on for the minute, only because, where is it? This one we bought, which I thought would fit, is exactly the same size as the pipes on the boiler. Uh, we know this one fits, so we'll put this on. We needed a flexi joint in the top anyway, 
we'll go through our hole we just made. There we go. So what I'll probably do now is get some aluminium tape around there and I'll probably box that in with something and make it look prettier. <laughs> thinking whether we pile here, pile there, pile there, pile there. Yeah. In all four corners, yeah? Yeah, just do like 15, 20 in a pile. Yeah. So, so we have Ewan's helping with the blocks, but we have an issue with um, <laughs> lots and lots of paper paper wasps. Um, yeah, they like to go in the holes in the blocks, and we had lots of them. But uh, there we go. The problem that Ewan's having is we have these paper wasps who like to build nests in these blocks and uh, they can be quite nasty. 
obviously if you're gonna ruin their home <laughs> but um, yeah you gotta be aware because they, they can sting and sting and sting again but what they do is they make little nests in these in the holes in the blocks yeah So every three or four blocks I'm going to put a tie, stainless steel tie like this, screwed into the column with a tack screw. So there we go. That's um, so there we go. That's a couple of mix worth done. Uh, done the awkward bits around the columns here, and uh, got the doorway spaced right, and then done a bit of a return on here. But, um, halfway through the second mix, uh, it's just just sort of died. It, it um, basically it was it was the, this, the mortar mix was drying up too quick, so. We've had to stop, it's got a bit warm for doing this. We'll start again in the morning. So here we go, as promised. Plum wine recipe, this is the start of it. So, I have here five kilos of plums, which are gorgeous. Uh, kindly donated by our friends Richard and Galena. Thank you guys, that's awesome. We still have a few left. We still have a few left. <laughs> I reckon there's 15 kilos in here, maybe a bit more, so we've got 5 kilos, so we're going for that. So we need to put 5 kilos into a big pan. So there, 5 kilos. All washed, obviously, to get all the bird poo and, and all destemmed as well. I'll just check one for um, quality purposes, because they're lovely. Mm. So we're not deep in them, no need to for this recipe. So here I have five kilos, I'll put the pounds up as well, hang on, five kilos, uh, which is um, About 11 pounds, two, five, six, ten, it's just 11 pounds, yeah, yeah 11 pounds of plums. To that we're adding, uh, let me get this right, eight kilos of water, litres. eight kilo, eight litres of water, so we'll turn, and it's boiling as well, in fact that one's not quite boiling. So here goes. So what this boiling water should do is kill off any mould and bacteria that we don't want. Bad mould and bacteria. We'll give them a little bit of a squish just to try and break the skins. It doesn't have to be a mash, but just if the skins are broken it would be slightly better, yeah. 
and obviously it's easier to break the skins when they're all hot in hot water. Just as a side note, in the background there, there's, um, I did some tomato sauce yesterday, so literally tomatoes, nothing else. Um, yeah, we, we just can those up, so the water bath process, which you've seen me do many times, so yesterday I got five jars, but we still have plenty more tomatoes to come, which uh, we have a little bit a of... A few of these yes. ox hearts. So they're... Uh, Quite a salad the boy. Very meaty tomato, aren't they? Yeah. So yes, just that's just another thing. But I haven't shown the process of that because it's literally something that we do all the time and we don't want to repeat ourselves too much. So there we go. So that's five kilos of plums, seven litres of water. Eight litres of water. Eight litres of water even. And we'll let that now, just put a lid on that, if we can find it. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll leave that cool for a day. So in here I've got some warm water. Sorry guys, back to the plum recipe. It's been 24 hours now. That it's cooled down. Now we've got to add the sugar and the yeast to the wine. So in here I've got I've just dissolved a couple of good um, tablespoons of sugar in warm water. Yeah. And here I have this wine yeast. It's probably better with plum wine to use champagne yeast, but we don't have any champagne yeast, so we have this just ordinary white wine yeast. And what I'm going to do is add one and a half of them, and a little bit for luck, like two there. <laughs> Give that a bit of a stir up. So the yeast now, in this warm conditions, which yeast love, should feed, start feeding on the sugar. And you can tell when they start feeding, because this will start to bubble up. So we'll wait for that before we add it to the wine. So it's all started to froth up now, so we'll take the Lids off these. Mm. And what I'll do is add a third of it to this one and two thirds of it to this one. And then we'll add the sugar. So the one with five kilos of plums gets three kilos of sugar. Oops. We'll even add a yellow into this one as well, I think. Now that's topping it right up. So there we go, that's three kilos of sugar in that one. And then a kilo and a half in this one. Two point five kilos of plums in that one. And we need a half. Half a kilo will be half a bag. There we go. Ooh, a bit more yellow left in there. There, give them a good stir. And then stir them twice a day for about a week. And then we'll be on to the next stage. So this will be an ongoing thing, this plum wine. To be honest, these, um, these pans are quite full as you can see. So I think it will be safer to decant them. Oh, 
into this and all over the floor. Now I've got to clean up the mess before Andrea sees it. There we go, all cleaned up. She'll never know if you don't tell her. So there it is. That's all from us this week, guys. Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for ringing that little, little notification, notification bell. bell. Ding, ding. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, a few a few uh, different things this week, but um, cutting marble and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching, and yeah. we'll see you in the next one. Thanks Bye. a lot. Bye.